Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So last month, I, I got to experience something or, or do something that I'd never done before. I got to use a teleprompter. See, I was recording a video uh, for a youth Bible study for the LCMS, and so I went to the, the headquarters over in, in St. Louis, and uh, they kind of met me at the door, and, and they swiped me through one door, and then we went down some stairs, and they used their security badge to swipe me through another door, and then we get to this third door in the middle, I'm like, I don't think there's a video at all. I'm pretty sure this is a CIA base. And so they swiped me through the, th- through the third door, and I realized, okay, this is finally, we got to the heart of the building, there's a recording studio. And so they're asking me, have you used a teleprompter before? No, when, when would I have used a teleprompter before? And, and so they're explaining how it works. You, you look at the camera, and the words will magically appear behind it. And as he's explaining this to me, I'm going, all right, I, I can do this. And then one of the uh, other people comes over with what looks like makeup. And I go, no, no, you don't understand. I've been doing my own makeup for my, my whole life. I, she goes, oh, don't worry, it's not makeup. This is anti-shine powder. <laughs> and then rather quickly, she said, oh, don't worry, we use this on everyone. And she put some on my nose, and she put some on, on my face, and she put some higher up on my face, and then kept going. I go, okay, yeah, you use it on everyone. <clears throat> but do you use this much? <laughs> See, it was an experience with losing the shine. Every once in a while, it's, it's a positive thing if you're recording a, a video. But I think for most of us, when we think about kind of losing the shine, it, it's a negative experience we have about something we used to hold up really highly. Right? You, you think... Uh, this class you're taking, it's going to be my favorite class ever. And then you realize who you're sitting next to. And you go, eh, maybe not anymore. Or, or you think, I finally picked my major. And then you get into that intro level science class and you realize, I don't like this at all. And it loses its shine. Or you get the new job. And you go, oh, finally, all the problems about my previous job this one fixes it all. And then, given a little bit of time, it becomes feeling like work again. You have that, that grind of work that we talked about last week. And it begins to lose its shine. Or you're in that honeymoon phase of the relationship, of your marriage. And then the covers get stolen just one too many times. Or, or you get to your first Christmas together and you realize you married a crazy person <laughs> because all the traditions they do are wrong and they think the same about you and so you have a fight and you lose a little bit of that shine. It even happens in the church. Where, whether it was a conflict or a, a decision that was made, something uh, that, that you were maybe overlooked for or you thought people would notice something that happened in, in your life and you didn't get that, that call. Someone said they would follow up and they didn't. And you realize, well, man, this church is just like the other churches I, I've been in. And it begins to lose that shine. And the common denominator between all of these is that we experience this, that we, we realize my expectation of what actually was reality was different. And now I finally know what's going on here. I finally see this person, this group, this experience for what it is. It's not as good as I thought it was going to be. Now this can also happen in our faith. Where we've been praying and praying and praying and one time we need something from God. The one time we really ask him for something, he doesn't give it to us. We don't seem to hear an answer at all. We're, we're looking through the word to find guidance and all we find is stuff that doesn't seem to make sense. 
to us. And so we can become disillusioned, discontent, and ultimately disconnected. It's kind of the thrust of the de-churched or the deconstruction movement. Is well, I've peered behind the veil. I've seen who God really is, and I don't like what I've seen. Or I don't think he's there at all. I've kind of seen behind the veneer of this whole church thing. And the people aren't who they say that they are. And this God clearly then isn't who he says that he is. But the difference between losing the shine with a person around us or, or an organization around us and doing it with our faith is, is with something in this world, we kind of lose that glory. They get knocked down a peg because we see what's actually going on. The problem in our faith, it's because we've lost sight of what's actually going on. When we become disillusioned, disconnected, discontent with our faith or with God himself, it's because we've lost sight of who he is. It's exactly what Paul says in our epistle reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is verse 3. He says, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world, which he's talking about the devil, the enemy here, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. He says that there is this veil that goes up, that we're tempted not to see what God is really doing, but we're, we're tempted to, to create this veil before, so uh, it's, it's just water. It's just bread and wine. It's just words uh, that are said. There's nothing behind it. There's no meaning to it. We're tempted to put this veil up and, and think that we're seeing what's actually going on and think that we're actually seeing God. It's, it's the greatest deception in all the universe to think for once, oh, I've finally seen the church. I've finally seen the faith for what it really is. The reality is we have never been farther from the truth. And in a world where this veil actually hides the glory of God, it's actually something that's happened in, in Scripture. Our Old Testament reading, Moses has an encounter with God and his face is shining. And instead of putting anti-shine powder on him, they put a veil not only because they don't want to see the shine, it kind of scares them, they also don't want to see the shine go away after time. The, the temple uh, in, in Israel had a curtain that separated the presence of God from the people of God. That curtain was called a, a veil to keep a holy God from an unholy people. They knew a little bit about this veil, but they always saw the veil as disguising the glory of God. Not, not as, as something that reveals there is no glory to God. And so what is it that removes that veil in a world that is frankly disenchanted with the church? In our own lives, when we begin to, to wonder, is this really all worth it? Is this really all true? We need the veil to be opened. And that's what Paul says our message is. He says, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as servants. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The solution is for God to shine his light in our hearts. It's the gospel. For, for when we remove the veil, when we see God for who he really is, what we see is his son on a cross. We see that veil in the temple 
was torn in two at the death of the Son of God. God's not trying to hide anything. In fact, when we remove this veil, what we see is not a God who is absent, a God who doesn't hear prayers, a God who doesn't exist. No, what we see, truly, when we remove the veil of Christianity, when we remove the veil of our God, is a God who loves you so much that he sent his only son to die. A God who not only hears prayers, he answers them. A God that, that not only understands and hates sin, but a God who forgives sin. A God who doesn't want to be distant from his people, but a God who adopts his people through water and the word who is present with his people in, with, and under this bread and wine. A God who goes before his people through his church, through his spirit. You think oftentimes it is easy for us to lose sight of what actually happens when we gather here together. This isn't just a bunch of people gathering together, sing a few songs, and have a donut. No, God is actually present here. And yet, for the vast majority of us, we think the coolest thing this weekend is going to happen. There's something on TV later on today. I'm not exactly sure what it is, and I don't think we can say the name of it because it's copyrighted. But for most of us, what, the outcome of that or, or, or whatever commercial, we think, that's what we think is the coolest thing that will happen this weekend. It's not even close. The God of the universe who created all things is speaking to you. He's speaking to you. He's forgiving your sins. He's died for you. He is present for you. And that's pretty cool. Right? When we remove the veil, when we see what God is actually doing, that he's living and active, it's okay, even for us as Lutherans, to look at that and go, that's pretty great. And maybe that thing we do with our face, that a smile, maybe every once in a while, we go, God's pretty awesome. And that's not us chasing an emotional feeling. That's not us putting our faith in, in, in our emotions or how we feel. No, that's us giving glory to God for who he is. Because here's the thing. When we see God for who he is, when we see that, that glory, we begin, like Moses, to shine. Maybe not visibly or physically, but we begin to shine in a world that desperately needs the joy, the glory of God. A world that, a world that is disillusioned by the church, by God himself. We don't need to hide God. No, we need to show God as he really is. Crucified, risen, and reigning for you. See, that's God at work as we shine in the world. I want to think of two ways that we, we can do this. The first is, it's one of the ways we talk about uh, kind of evangelism or outreach as a congregation, is one very easy thing to do is speak well of your church. Speak well of your faith when you're out in the world. Things like talking about how you're excited for your group's Lenten meal that you're planning, and, and it, oh, we're, we're doing this thing, and it's really excited. And hey, you, do you want to come along? Right? Things like, like sharing a, a sermon or, or something that happened in a Bible study, sharing that, that on Facebook, or you went to an event and it impacted you, and so you tell people about that. You invite someone to come with you. That's how we shine in the world. And as we do that, we remember it's not just us that's doing that individually. No, we're actually doing that as a body. See, many congregations have, have a thing called a mission map. where They've got this map somewhere in their church, and it's a map of the world, and, so that, and they have a pin of where they're involved in missions. So I've got a pin in, in Honduras where that church took a mission trip, and we've got 
one over in Southeast Asia where we have a missionary that we're supporting. And we've got one over in Mexico where uh, we helped build a house a couple years ago. And, and, and that's our mission map. And we praise God for the ways that the gospel is reaching the ends of the earth, but it is a very incomplete mission map. See, if we were to make one for Zion, I think it would look a lot like, you know, a map of kind of a 15-mile radius around Bethalto. And there would be like 300 little pins right across the parking lot here at Zion Lutheran School where the light of Christ is shining every day. But there'd also be dozens of pins in the Bethalto School District, in Roxana, in Alton, Metro East Lutheran High School, where we have all these Zion members as students, as faculty, that are shining the light where God has placed them. There'd be a whole bunch of, of, of little pinpoints at the refinery, across the river, at Boeing, the various hospitals, the places that we work where we're shining the light of Christ as we encourage one another, as we faithfully use the gifts God has given us. There'd be like 10 of them on Brooks Drive, because a lot of y'all live right over in some of these, these neighborhoods. Right? And so for us to look and say, how can we shine together? How can we shine in our neighborhoods, in our world? That's the mission map of Zion Lutheran Church. It's not just something overseas. It is all of us. Because we are the way that the world is going to see the unveiled glory of God. That, that they will taste and see that the Lord is indeed good. He is real. He is present. And He is for them. See, we're called to shine. That's God at work. It's like Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. May we be that light wherever we go. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus until he calls you home.